Um, this should be a fairly quick um, bit of a novelty session, really, S specifically with so many uh, critical care and paramedic people in the audience. This is a topic, um, if we could have the slide set up, um, that is very niche and is uh, really to address some com confusion or even some just lack of awareness of um, some particular combined techniques that are rapidly making their way into the armamentarium of um, airway operators. And these are combined laryngoscope and bronchoscopic, um, sort of flexible bronchoscopic techniques for airway management. Um, the two techniques I'm referring to are the VAFI and the FASI, and I'll describe what that is in a moment. Um, so just to um, understand where these uh, acronyms have come from, the VAFI refers to a video laryngoscope assisted flexible bronchoscopic intubation. And the FASI, which may be a new term to you because I made it up, uh, is the flexible bronchoscope assisted rapid sequence induction. Although I made up the term, it's a technique that was, to my knowledge, first described by Mercer and Groom and their team at the Aintree Hospital in uh, Liverpool and uh, was appeared in their um, systematic review and guidelines for the management of um, airway trauma, acute airway trauma. Um, so the reason there's two techniques and there's confusion, we need to go back to the question of why would you combine a video laryngoscope and a flexible bronchoscope? And the reality is there's two distinct problems that we're trying to address and there's two distinct techniques. Um, one technique, the VAFI, is really designed to address problems above the vocal cords, anticipated or unanticipated difficulty with getting to the vocal cords. The second problem is when we're anticipating a problem below the vocal cords, namely some sort of a breach to the trachea, which we are particularly worried about making worse, um, causing tracheal separation or causing a false passage. Um, so this first technique, the VAFI, is it's about actual or anticipated difficulty navigating, navigating to or through the vocal cords with either the video laryngoscope alone or with a flexible bronchoscope alone. Um, and where a, a wake technique is, is um, contraindicated for whatever reason. Um, and I'll emphasise this a number of times through the course, neither of these techniques is an alternative or an excuse for not using an awake intubation technique. Uh, and NAP4 is very clear that we are still underutilizing or even getting, continuing to underutilize awake techniques in patients with um, anticipated or known difficulty. So some of the examples where we might use um, this VAFI technique is a non-compliant patient with an extreme anterior larynx congenital abnormalities where even with a video laryngoscope we're expecting that we might still not get a view of the cords. Um, similarly, a non-compliant patient with an anterior larynx but also a crowded pharynx. And many of you will have had that experience of, you know, just getting the view with the um, hyperangulated blade that you wanted and then all of a sudden introducing the tube and losing that view. Um, being forced to use a bougie that may not be ideally suited to a hyperangulated blade and then struggling. And this is where you might use the flexible bronchoscope as a steerable bougie. And that's essentially what this technique is, do is doing, is using the flexible bronchoscope as a steerable bougie. Um, and similarly, you might use it where you're anticipating something that's obstructing your view of the cords when you get that view and that you might need to go around it. So an obstructing or a friable mass at or near the glottic opening. But uh, the second technique, the FASI, is, as I said, very specific around a suspected tracheal tear or disruption and where a uh, uh, an awake technique is contraindicated. Um, and the key is in the, in the term there that the FASI is designed to be done as quickly as possible because, as Andy alluded to with the last um, presentation, we're trying to avoid... This is a patient at risk of aspiration. We don't want to muck around. We want to get in there as quickly as possible. And it's that speed that um, differentiates the two techniques. I'll say again, neither of these techniques are an alternative or an excuse not to do an awake technique. And that's been one of the great 
byproducts of video laryngoscopy and to some degree also high flow nasal oxygen is it's been this, this um, sense of a suit of armour that we never need to do awake techniques anymore. And I think that's been a great disservice to airway management is to give people this sense that we, um, we can avoid taking the safest option uh, in a lot of these patients. Um, so I'll, at the end, I'll summarise the differences. Oh, we've done a, a video here where we've tried to demonstrate the two different techniques. I'll just emphasise that the main difference is that when you're doing the, um, the VAFI, you're, you've got the tube preloaded on the scope so that you're using the scope as the, as the steerable bougie and then you slide the tube in over the, um, over the scope. When we are doing the FASI, where we're trying to get the tube, again, and trying to intubate the patient as fast as possible, the scope comes in later. You're performing the whole technique like you would normally do a rapid sequence induction, but then you stop when the bevel gets to the, gets to the cords and then you inter introduce the scope. Um, but I'll, I'll describe that a bit more afterwards. So the first uh, technique that we're going to go through in real time is the um, video-assisted flexible bronchoscopic intubation or video-assisted fibre optic intubation and remember this is a technique designed for an anticipated difficult intubation or unanticipated where you've failed with flex, uh, with video laryngoscopy and you now need to introduce the fiber optic Wait, scope to make the sure. difference between this technique and the fiber optic assisted rsi is with this technique we've got the tube loaded onto the fiber optic scope and we're using the fiber optic scope to find our way to the vocal cords, which we anticipate to be quite difficult. First stage is to insert your video laryngoscope. In this case, I've chosen a hyperangulated blade to try to achieve as much space for the fiber optic um, scope to pass through to get to the cords. I move out of the way, create some space for Bill to now perform an oral flexible bronch intubation. He's through the cords. As you can see, he's identified the carina at which point he's going to pass the tube. I'll leave the video laryngoscope in situ until the tube's in place. That creates space for passage, but it also allows me to identify that we're in the right spot. Bill can still see the carina. That's a second point of confirmation. And our third point of confirmation is going to be end tidal CO2. All right, so the technique that I'm going to run you through now is the flexible bronch assisted RSI. Or and this is a technique that we specifically utilize where we've got a suspected or possible um, disruption of the trachea below the vocal cords. And the difference here is that I don't have the tube loaded on the scope. I'm gonna go about a rapid sequence induction as I normally would. Um, and basically at the point that I get the tube to the, um, to the glottis, I'm now going to stop at that point. I'm not passing the bevel of the tube much beyond the cords or basically at the cords. And I'm going to get Bill to come in and rapidly pass the scope beyond any disruption that might be in the trachea. And that allows a sort of a cell dinger technique for us to pa safely pass the tube beyond any disruption. At that point, we come out. Again, we don't want to ventilate until we've got air in the cuff because that risks making any uh, subcutaneous emphysema worse. So that's the rapid sequence, uh, fiber optic assisted rapid sequence induction. Um, so what do we do when we're, our, our blade of choice would be the hyperangulated blade and we can't just simply pass a tube with no sort of introducer to the vocal cords? We can go through the same process, which is basically view of the cords, introducer in place, and again, stopping at the introitus with a little bit of a removal of the uh, introducer, a slightly further advancement, and then we can take our introducer out. At this point, I'll get Bill to guide the scope beyond any disruption in the airway. If there's any resistance or an, a failure or an in inability to pass the scope, you would take the tube back a centimetre or two because the assumption would be that you've created a false passage or entered a disruption at the immediate subglottic region. And hopefully that clarifies how you could manage the fibre optic assisted rapid sequence induction in a patient that is in a neutral position or has got an uncleared C-spine.
So I said at the start that this would be a bit of a novelty, that it wouldn't sort of impact the, the practice of many of in the room, but the guys that really pioneered this at the Aintree, the reason they got so much experience is that they're co-located with a prison and they get a hell of a lot of hangings and they introduced this technique as part of their protocol for all ED intubations of patients with suspected um, uh, airway trauma. Um, and I think that the, what this does do is um, raise the importance of the debate which has started to occur here in Australia where I would say the number of EDs that have flexible bronchoscopes, disposable flexible bronchoscopes um, stocked in their ED would be single figure percentage at best. Um, and I guess the question is, should that be a debate that we start to have and should there be the disposable scopes available in ED, whether it be for this technique or whether it be for VAPI where we've had these unanticipated difficult intubations, the counter argument would be that if you put a piece of equipment there, people will start to use it and maybe use it for the wrong reasons without adequate training. Um, just to highlight the key differences um, between the techniques, uh, the VAPI, above the cords, ETT is loaded on the scope um, and you're using it like a sterile bougie. The Farsi, and I do apologise to Persian speakers who I've co-opted their language from them, but the Farsi is uh, um, the pathology or the problem below the cords. The ET is not loaded. The process is identical to the RSI until we get the bevel to the cords. The scope is introduced beyond the cords and it's designed to be as quick as possible. Thanks.